IBM was an example of what Buffett bought and actually he had a realized loss on that. The question I would ask myself is, okay, when he made the investment in IBM, what was the thesis and what was visible or easily visible at that time that was somehow missed by this great investor? And, and so actually, when you start looking at these companies and asking these questions, it becomes really obvious. And so if I just stay on IBM for a second, what IBM had done at the time Warren bought the stock was that they had published five-year advance guidance, clearly stating what their cash flows and revenues and type amount of buybacks were likely to be over the next five years. And I think the mistake Warren made was he relied very heavily on the document. And he had no reason not to rely on that document because the people who put that document up were very high quality people. They believed the document. They weren't trying to snow investors or something. But if one paid more attention to what was going on with the business, there were some tread marks there that one could look at and, and one would have seen that there were some issues there, which later became a lot more significant as they went along. So in that case, for example, there was a very strong, I would say, probability put on the guidance given and not as strong a perspective on some of these other things that were relevant to the company and so on. And when I did a checklist, for the most part, we could tell relatively easily what was the factor or factors that a great mind had missed. And then we just, the factor that got missed, we just added that to the checklist. Yeah. Okay. And once I had all these different factors from all these different investments by great investors, I resorted them by category because they fell into a few different categories. And the single largest reason for investment not working out when we looked at all the different failures was leverage. So they were, they probably, we have probably about 30 questions related to leverage in the yeah. checklist. The second reason why the investment didn't work out was some type of a error or misunderstanding on the moat or competitive advantage of the business. So that was another big category, another probably 20, 30 questions. And the third was something related to the management of ownership, you know, some nuance on that front. And then you get to unions and environment and other things which are more, more lower down. But basically the two or three things that really stood out was, which was the biggest issue. The capitalism is creative destruction and all businesses are under assault all the time. And so the ability for business to withstand those constant attacks for a long period of time is more the exception than the rule. And so people tend to misunderstand or misjudge. If we, if we look at a business like Apple, for example, it looks bulletproof, right? It's such a strong franchise and such a strong following. and They could raise prices significantly and people aren't going to switch to Android or anything. You know, it's, it's a very strong loyalty there. When I look into the future, I don't see anything affecting their competitive advantage for 10 years. I think I can make a fairly strong case that it's unlikely Apple goes into decline by 2032 and such. I think it might be cranking till then. But I can't make that statement about 2042. So what looks stable for five or 10 years I have no idea what happens in 15 or 20 years. Yeah. And the thing is, if, if Apple has a real problem by 2037, where it's already gone into significant decline, that's an issue for people investing today. That's a real issue. And, and these are difficult questions to answer. And, and that's why I think assessing the durability of a moat is a tough question.